Yeah, man. Ep- All right. This is episode 156. Right? 156. Try 350. Oh, I should probably open up the show notes. No, no. I meant to say 356. Yeah. No, no. It's 156. Back when we were funny. That never occurred. And we had a full house. <laughs> it wasn't just us two. <laughs> that also never occurred. Oh. Anyway. So, uh, oh, right. Because we were a different show back then. You're right. So. I, like most times, hey, what's up? I didn't do anything worthwhile in my life except consume media, like a good corporate drone. Yeah, like a good, uh, uh, good wagey KG. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I, I also did the same thing. Oh, excellent. Who should go first? Because we haven't talked in like three weeks. I got my balls ultrasounded, but that's like another story for another day. Uh, why? I thought you didn't want to talk about that. I don't remember anymore. Just tell me about it. I want to hear about it. I uh, talked about I my in, balls, and that's your turn. I went in, and I got my balls ultrasounded. Did they put the gel on it? Yeah. Oh, was it cold? No. It was warm. I don't know why women complain about this shit. Women complain about a lot of things. I don't understand why. I know. But no, it wasn't cold. And it was funny, because, like, the lady who was doing it, she covered my legs with the with the little, like, paper cover. Yeah. With the paper covers on the bed, but like I still had to poke my penis and balls out, so it's like it didn't even matter. Like a Jew. Yeah, it didn't even matter that I was wearing a gown or had the little covers over my legs because it's like, uh, okay. I know. I mean, like at the third time, I had to drop my drop my pants for someone to look at it. I was just like, I was like, come on, like you're you're we're all professionals here. <laughs> yeah. I don't need a blanket. <laughs> Should they find a baby in there? No, not a thing. Oh, they just oh. found a bunch of spiders. They found a what? A bunch, a bunch of, spiders? of spiders? Yeah. I thought it was full. I thought from that last banner, didn't you have like a Bakugan? Where'd uh, the Bakugan oh, yeah. go? Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god. I, I, I had it replaced. <laughs> With spiders? Yeah, just like everything that I loved in my childhood. Like all my Yu Gi Oh cards turned into fucking bugs. Oh man. They my bugs! Uh, I guess that would be kind of an interesting thing to do. What, to have all of your childhood things that you love turn into bugs and crawl well, away? just replacing all of your internal organs and fluids with bugs. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Speaking of things that I used to love in my childhood that turn into bugs, Corey finally got a Switch and Pokemon Sword, so I got Pokemon Shield. I pre-ordered Animal Crossing at GameStop. <laughs> yeah, that's why she got a Switch. She wanted to get Animal Crossing. Well, but... I was in there because Christina wanted to see if there was Godzilla stuff there because uh, Jay's it's girlfriend. stops and they probably will. They didn't, though. But since I was in there, I was asking the guy, I was like, hey, are there any like pre-order bonus stuff for Animal Crossing? He's like, there's a poster. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Because <laughs> otherwise What's I wouldn't have. What's the place that has a plush bag of bells as the pre-order bonus? Oh, fuck. I don't know. That would have been awesome. Yeah, I think probably Best, be Best Buy. Buy I won't go into Best Buy though. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, that's Corey got her Switch there because they have a deal where if you buy a Switch Lite, you get a free carrying case with it. So that's pretty good. I mean, I mean to say fuck every place, but yeah, I was just in. If I happen to be in the Best Buy, I probably would ask them the same thing. Yeah. So Pokemon Sword and Shield is just Pokemon. Yeah. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I don't want to hear anything about it either. So. It, it feels like a 3DS game. So that's great. Well, every I'm having fun, though. I, I didn't yeah. play Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, so I'm kind of in Jones and for Pokemon again. I feel like every Pokemon game is like a is like a console generation behind graphically yeah, like anyway. If, yeah, like Pokemon Red and Blue is somehow not even a Game Boy game. It's like something, some weird, like, non-existent precursor to the Game Boy. That's what it would run on. <laughs> Then again, Game Freak did literally start its life as, like, a game company founded after, like, the autistic dude who made Pokemon made a bunch of zines, so... Of course. Did you not know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, the dude who made Pokemon, like, started a zine called Game Freak, and eventually, like, it grew into a company that made games. Spooky. Yeah, kinda. I mean, Pokemon <laughs> almost bankrupted them. Like, that was their big passion project, like, when they would work on other shit. Like, when, like Pulse Man... Or uh, I think they I think they might have worked with some companies on some other shit, but basically they're just doing it to fund Pokemon, and then Pokemon became fucking huge. Sure, so it was worth it. it. Worked out. <laughs> um, 
I so this is like forever ago now, but I did I, I did finally see the Jerker. I didn't talk about yeah. that, right? No, you did not. Yeah, we it were going to last week, and then I had to go somewhere, so we couldn't do the show. I might as well tell you now. I can't do the show next weekend, so. <laughs> That's all good. We should probably be doing it once every other week anyway, because then we actually have things to talk about instead of having an hour long show where it's like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything either. <laughs> what Pokemon would you fuck? <laughs> like, that's funny. I know I love it. Don't. It's get me still low punny. Um, yeah. I don't, nah, Guard of War. Eh, whatever. I don't know why people are getting all up about Hatterene. From She's the hot. Generation. Eh. Anyway, tell us about your society. Oh, it's great. No, uh, it was just funny how I wa- Christine and I watched it the day before the Oscars. So it's just kind of uh, funny that he won one. And then he had that rambling weirdo fucking speech about uh, uh, babies being taken away from cow mothers or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what I love about the whole situation, because uh, he also won like Best Actor at the BAFTAs, and he, he did it. I don't agree with this speech necessarily, but he had this big speech about how like, yeah, there's a lot of white people in this room. Like, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. that's basically what the speech was about. And I love, I don't agree with that. I don't think that film sets need to have diversity for the sake of diversity. I think, like, if you hire people that are good at their job, that doesn't matter what race they are. But I, I love that p- the media tried to tank that movie for fucking months, and they still are. Yeah. And they're still mad about it. And then he just comes in, he's like, yeah, a lot of rich white people running the BAFTAs. It's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's just nice to know that like none nothing any of them did amounted to anything well it's like how uh it's like how uh, bernie's losing but he is yeah. he's winning <laughs> the media fuck all of them anyway it's okay fucking biden's gonna get the nomination and then like have a stroke on fucking on the way to the presidential no he's gonna he's not gonna have a stro- no see you got it all backwards Bernie's gonna the one who's gonna have a stroke because he's 180 years old biden is gonna have a fucking um what, Biden's going to think that the the room is suddenly filled with lizard men and he's yeah, just going to open fire. Exactly. He's going to have like an Alzheimer fit. While or, saying yeah, while saying something that doesn't make any sense just like I told you I'd shoot. Yeah, but to I'm, I'm about to say dementia fit. Yeah. Black black children are just as is smart as the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want any brown children <laughs> on the moon. They will eat everything. Yeah. Oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait. I guess we well, since I brought it up I did watch, I've been watching a lot of uh, Bro Bogan, and uh, there was that interview with him and Bernie Sanders, and I refuse to listen to anything. Are you talking about Joe Rogan? Yeah, and I refuse to okay, listen to Okay, I didn't any- know what the fuck you were talking about for a second. Blo Bogan. How's Joe- it feel to listen to normie podcasts? Uh, I don't know, you tell me. I don't know. I don't <laughs> listen to normie podcasts, I only listen to Yeah, you're right, listen to Garbage. Shit. <laughs> Neat. No, I listen to the good shit. I've heard clips from Joe Rogan, he's a retard. I know. <laughs> Look, the only episodes I can listen to are really the episodes where he doesn't, re- where he just asks the questions, yeah, and doesn't talk to, much. Yeah. Because like yeah, I can't, like, it's what strange. If we are living inside like a simulation or something. Well, weird. it's strange. I can't listen. Like you'd think the best episodes would be that he, when he has comedians on, but those are usually the worst episodes for me. <laughs> but no, like he had Bernie Sanders on. I was like, I refuse to listen to it because it kept getting recommended, and then I'm like, all right, fine. It looks like this guy's going to be the fucking nominee. Let me at least see what he has to say. And right. I was like, all right, I see why people like him. So I'm going to vote for him. But let me t- but let me tell you, I do have a sadistic reason for wanting to vote for him, too. Because if and when he wins, I want, I want him to win because I, when he tries to do all this stuff that he's talking about and still can't do it because <laughs> the government is, is as corrupt as he says... I want to I want to sit on my high horse and laugh and say, "Ha, <laughs> see, your boy won and he and still nothing got fucking and done." And still couldn't ruin the country with socialism. Not even not th- well that or he didn't get any I mean the stuff he talks about is great. I love the idea of fucking taxing the rich and all this kind of shit. Oh yeah, it all sounds great. Yeah. But will he ever will he be able to get it done? Hell fucking no. Hell to the na nizza. Uh Anyway, the Joker was good. <laughs> yeah. The Joker was good. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't sure how to feel about it after it was done. Yeah. The whole time, I, mean, I know you texted me immediately after yeah. and you were like, we truly do live in a society. But yeah. Like, that's the takeaway from the movie. Like the whole movie, I'm rooting for him. But Which, then, I mean, that's the point, but also he's like, I, I don't know. He I didn't like that so he was well. directly, indirectly involved in creating Antifa. 
Because it's like, is that the serious thing? Like, I love. I didn't all really this... view it that way, but like, well, he started. Yeah, I could see how you'd see that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he started like everybody's everyone has seen the movie already knows, but it's like you know, he's only killing people who have wronged him in some way, and everybody that he kills is usually an asshole. So yeah. I'm rooting for him the whole time. But then you know, outside of that, you got people seeing him do stuff. They're they're uh, they're um applying their own political spin on the things he's doing because no one really knows why he's doing the things he does and then basically yeah he like, like accidentally creates a yeah movement. a riot and i'm like uh, and i'm watching this and i'm like well i like that he killed crappy people but i don't like that the that the city is getting destroyed and, but after right, uh, but that's not technically his fault like that was never the that was never i guess that's a pony contention because like you could say it is his fault because he's the one who did it but also that was never the intention no. it was just other people that took that and ran with it yeah. so it really depends on how you look at it you know, it's a deep movie full of full of gamer moments oh yeah the other thing i didn't really like so much was that how he when he was finally when you know the when he's on that talk show he got so whiny like every fucking piss baby on the internet yeah yeah that sh- that scene is a little cringy for that reason but it's also like really tense so it still yeah. kind of works no i work i mean basically what i'm saying is not a lot of movies make me think after i <laughs> see them so this what i was like that was a good movie i liked it a lot you walked out of the theater that you didn't go to because you watched it at your house and you're like get a load of this society well they wouldn't let me in the, the theater when i tried because i was white and i didn't have christina with me oh yeah <laughs> Excuse me, King. You need to have a girlfriend to get into yeah. this fucking showing. We really do. and I said we really do live in a society. And I started slowly applying red lipstick. Yeah, you you um you reached into your pants and somehow had some red liquid on your fucking fingers and just put them on the on your uh, the corners of your mouth. And well, that was obviously smile. from my my bursting hemorrhoids. Bursting oh, I at thought the it was seams. from your menstruation, but yeah, ah, uh, too. No, I reached into someone else's. I reached into. I, I reached into someone else's pants. Pulled and got some red liquid. <laughs> you could smell it, so you're like her. Yeah, I smell your blood. Uh, I smell speaking death of, on you. Speaking of smelling menstruation in the movie theater, uh-huh. I, uh, <laughs> I saw Sonic the Hedgehog. You didn't. Oh yeah, that's right. You didn't talk about that yet. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Wow. Don't spoil it for me, because I still want to see it. Oh, you giant fucking piss baby. Because all the things I have to talk about are spoilers. Mm. As to why, uh, let me just say it this way. I didn't like it. Corey didn't like it. What? Yeah. Really? Didn't like it. What the hell? I But I can't talk about it, because if I do, I'll, sp- I'll spoil shit. Or if I even mention anything from the movie, you'll be like, No, I want to go see it eventually. All right, all right, here, here. Let's, let's, let's reach some kind of compromise. Can you <laughs> talk about the movie without spoiling any jokes? Uh, sure. Sonic is Bubsy the Bobcat levels of not shutting the fuck up. It's almost like Ugh. a parody uh, it's it's like what people think Sonic is in the games based on just hearing the hearing him talk once. Okay. But he's not. And the problem is the movie's trying to write him as more of a kid than a teenager and hmm. like I get it, but also this is not the same character I'm used to. It, it, he he just doesn't stop talking to the point where people make comments about that later in the movie. And fucking it just it didn't sit right i mean i i assume you've seen the gif of him fortnite flossing yeah i loved it yeah because he does that twice oh what really it was so nice he, he did it twice uh well because the first time he did it when he didn't die when hitting eggman's car or whatever and then the second time he does it at the end of the movie when me and Corey uh give him his literal race car bed in the attic <laughs> like an autistic child does he really get a race car bed i'm not even kidding yes. is it blue though like in the game no, it's red it's like oh that red. that's so gay that could have been a perfect fucking uh he, he, he gets excited and he stands on it for, he zips around the room and says oh my god all my stuff a race car bed and he zips onto this race car bed and very quickly flosses for a couple seconds and i died inside i'm sorry but this all sounds very cute to me You'll probably find it cute because you don't have like a specific idea of what this character is supposed to be. I don't have the specific brand of autism that you do. (laughs) Well, it's like 
Look, I, have a I thought brand. there were plenty of moments in this movie that were cute, but it didn't feel like Sonic. It felt like good. No, but <laughs> not in like a good... look. The characterization of Sonic in the past few games has actually been somewhat decent, where he's not like Whoa! he's not like Jaleel White. Like, but Gus. that's the best Sonic. You and no, I, you and I, will definitely have a very different actually, opinion no, about I, this movie. No, I lied because the characterization in the games is kind of like that, where he's just telling dumb fucking jokes. Where he's like, "I'm sorry if everyone hears that squeaking sound. I for, I didn't forget to oil the wheels on my mobile home. I my dog is crying for some reason, despite the fact that not even an hour ago I had her out and she pooped and peed." Your mobile home, as you're screaming down the highway. <laughs> yeah, as I'm screaming out of down, control. Rolling, I'm the, I'm in the gun <laughs> truck that's chasing Sonic. Oh fuck. But I like Jaleel White's Sonic. I find it annoyingly funny. <laughs> yeah, and it's some some of the lines in the newer Sonic games uh, kind of fit that. Where like uh, he, they're in like the ice world, and he does like a flip like after landing on a robot, and he's like, "That was cool." Pun entirely intended. And then Tails and Robotnik just look like they want to die. <laughs> like, but I don't know. It's it's different in this one. It just feels like it doesn't feel like. The same character. It, yeah, because he's does. a kid. He hasn't I, he hasn't matured yet into the fine upstanding adult that he is in Sonic fucking boom. I know, but <sighs> he just doesn't shut up. And none of the jokes he says are even funny. All of the funny they, jokes in the movie yeah. are delivered by literally every other character but him. But maybe that's the idea. I mean, there he is one, annoying. When you watch this line, Saturday morning cartoon, he's annoying. That's what I mean, though. Like, people, people think Sonic's still like that in the games, and he's not really... No one, no, no one thinks that because no one has played any of those new games because they all suck cock. No, no. Sonic Generations is good. Sonic Colors is good. Sonic Lost World How is How many of the fine. people in the theater do you think have played those games? I don't know. And I know a lot of people like I talked to a coworker at, at work. She was like, I love, I saw Sonic. I'm like, Oh, and she's like, I loved it. I'm like, well, I guess you would. Cause you don't really have like any attachment to this. Like if you don't know a you... lot about Sonic, you'll probably really enjoy this movie. It's a totally serviceable family movie. That's I just so watched the movie going like, okay, can I please spoil the first two minutes of the movie? No, I told you like, just don't, I, I could pretty much guess what happens plot. Oh no, you can't. Well, you then can't. don't tell me if I can't. Actually, I don't want to know. No, but it's literally the beginning of the movie. All right, fine, fine. So they show him running around Green Hill Zone or whatever the fuck they call it in this movie, because Green Hills is also the name of the town in Montana that he escapes to. Yeah. Uh, on his on his alien planet, Mobius, and he goes home to his mother figure, who is a giant talking owl named Long Claw. <laughs> cool. And that's where the movie lost me. Why? I was like, why is he? Have... And, and everyone makes everyone says the same thing. Oh, well, it's way he's just an animal. Why wouldn't he? Have... And I'm like, look, this is a character that has existed for three decades. They have so much shit they could pull from. They don't need to be like, no one's going to understand this movie about a, a fast talking blue rat. If he doesn't have some fucking mother figure that dies at the beginning of the movie. Oh, no. Yeah, well, she doesn't die necessarily. It's implied that she dies because she like throws a ring in the air and then it turns into a portal to Earth. And she's like, go, never stop running. And then he goes to Earth and then the, the portal closes and it looks like she's about to get killed by. Another thing that I wish was in the movie more is the fucking Echidna tribe is attacking them for some reason. Oh, neat. Very clearly the Echidna tribe. And I'm like, I fucking wish there was more of this shit in the movie, but... A lot of interviews have come out lately. It's like, why wasn't Super Sonic in the movie? Why wasn't Knuckles in the movie? And it's like, they just wanted to focus on the fucking, like, origins of Eggman and Sonic. So it makes sense that they would kind of keep it really simple and not have all that shit in there. Um, and I'm not even really necessarily bothered that the rings are, for some reason, portals. I'm more worried. I'm more, bo I'm more bothered that, due to some circumstances that I can't really explain... Uh, Sonic literally drops his bag of rings in one of the ring portals and he has to go to San Francisco to get them back. Okay. He literally says, like, I dropped my rings and I'm sitting there watching and I'm like, this is like literally a parody if you expected like a Paramount executive to have played Sonic 1 for five minutes and then write the entire movie based on that. But it's still kind of a fun, like, road trip movie between him and james marsden there's a there's a there's a few good jokes in there there's one that i definitely won't spoil but like 
let's just say there's a picture that shows up at some point near the beginning of the movie and it was the only time it got me to audibly laugh out loud um but i just didn't like it i didn't like it that much i can see why people do and i hate being that guy you are that guy but i am that guy because like i want i went in kind of wanting to like it and i was i didn't expect it to be great i didn't expect it to be this bad not not that other people are going to think it's bad. Not that it's an objectively bad movie, but I didn't expect it to be what it is. And I think that's maybe why I'm disappointed. Also, all the best jokes in the movie are spoiled in the trailers. So that's mm. unfortunate. Yeah. So that sucks. But, you know, so you Sonic. and Derek. I yeah, had to skip uh, that whole section of the podcast because he was like, you know, the other three liked it. And then he, or I, I think they liked it. Actually, they were talking about it. I skipped it too because I didn't want to hear anything about it. And then. Yeah, I really, and Jim, really, really didn't like it. And I'm like, oh, fuck you, Derek. <laughs> Jim Carrey ranges from like being annoying to actually being kind of the best part of the movie. Oh, I'm sure. That really sounds kind of. like Jim Carrey. <laughs> like that first scene they showed in the trailer where he's telling the guy to shut up and he's like, I'm in charge. It's like that scene's fucking annoying. But that oh, yeah, no, that looked way better. awful. Yeah, that sucks. That's a bad introduction to that character. Him and, but, like, the, him and the scenes with Snively looked funny. Yeah, they are. Like, what he's, what he's, I love the way you make the latte. That's he's hilarious. Like, that, that's like a that's hilarious good, yeah. way to deliver that line. Yeah, there's some good, he, he carries the rest of that movie later. So don't worry about that shit. I'm not worried. I think I like it. <clears throat> you probably will. I've also, also, um, I think it was Nick Robinson on Twitter. That I'll echo his sentiment that it's like the only moments of charm that come out of this movie are the fact that this, the design was fixed. Huh. And if they kept the original design, this would be almost unwatchable. I kind of, in, I'm really hoping when this comes out on Blu-ray, they include like the original cut with the original. Footage. I heard that because I kind of want to see it. It was only the trailer that had that model. Like apparently, I, it was never modeled yet. I don't know because I saw fucking footage behind the scenes of like the 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 placeholder dummy, and it looked like the old design. Oh, all right. Talk for a bit. Hold on. No, I don't really feel like talking right now, but I guess I will. I saw lots of things. I think the Sonic movie is going to be good. I think I'm going to like it because I don't have a autistic man child devotion to a character of a thing that has evolved for 30 years anyway. And it's never the same, just like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, how every iteration is always different. As long as Sonic is fun and fast, I don't really see any point in thinking that it was bad. Because he doesn't live up to the, this ideal uh, blue Jesus character. <laughs> no, it's hard to describe. I just kidding. I, no, I know, but like, I don't like being that guy. But I just you I, are that guy. I left the movie theater dissatisfied with the. Look, I, I can. Doing. All right, look, I'm making fun of you. Of course, I'm making fun of you. But I can relate in the sense that when I saw the first Resident Evil movie, I had the same reaction. Probably, yeah. Like you had, you had. I, I think at that point, movie based on a video game, where if you even have a level of familiarity with the video game, you're going to go in and be like, "What in the fuck am I watching?" Like Silent Hill. Like I know a lot of people didn't like that first Silent Hill movie because, That's like, right. it's no, it's probably one of the best video game movies ever made. It's just that, like, if you're a diehard Silent Hill fan, you go into that thing and you're like, "What in the fuck am I looking at?" The second one is as bad as people say, though, because I tried oh, watching yeah. that. I couldn't oh, I've finish heard. it. Yeah, I couldn't finish it at all. I couldn't get through most, like, even most of the beginning. Uh, well, the Resident Evil was so bad. Everyone liked that movie, it seems, except for me, and it's just because it was so. It was too different. Right. Like the, I, I like the second one, and then no one seems to like that one, even though it's the well, most like the games. Wasn't wasn't that fucking movie just basically so that uh, what's his face could be like, look how hot my wife is. She's in all of them. No, I know, but like you expect Jill or like Jill is in Chris the second Redfield. one. No, I know, I know she's in the movies, but the main character of those movies is Alice. Yeah, that's well, yeah, that's the reason why. I, that's one other reason why I don't like them. Right, but that's what I'm saying. The, yeah. the, that's why they're so different is because it was just the director going like, Chugga, ha, ha, no, there's a lot of guys. things that are different about, I mean, that are different from the games in the first movie. I mean, right. There's but no that's AI. Chief among all of them. There's no, it's just funny how they adapted things from the movies into the game. Just like the Silent Hill <laughs> movies. They adapted those in the later games. Not that those games. Yeah. Were all that like great. Well, cause I don't know. Silent Hill, the first movie, 
there's a lot of elements that are similar to the first game. They just like swap some shit around. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I saw Us. Yeah, tell me about that because I didn't see that movie. It's crappy. Now, now he's got a fucking Candyman movie coming out. Oh God! Did you man. not hear about that? No. He's re- they're, yeah, they're doing Candyman. I can't wait to watch Candyman, but with no subtlety for the race relations. Fuck's undertones. sake. I mean, look. It's going to be great. This movie wasn't woke. I'll give it that much. It wasn't woke. and But it wasn't good. No, my main problem always... With, with, okay, well, let me, let, me, let me at least start with the good things. The things I liked about it. Uh, it looks great. So he must be a really good director. Because it looks it really... It seems good. like it. Yeah. It, it, he's, it, he it, seems like a good cinematographer yeah. and all that shit. It looks great. The performances are good. Um, for a while, uh, the, like the... the What do you call it? The tone? It, I guess that's the word. Like, it's sufficiently creepy. When there's comedic parts, they're really funny. Like, I never... Right. I never... For, like... Not until, like, maybe the last half hour, but, like, I never, like really unintentionally laughed at anything in the movie. Cause that happens a lot when I watch horror movies, I laugh at stuff that's supposed to be scary. Yeah. I didn't really unintentionally laugh at anything and anything that was supposed to be funny. I laughed at like, he is a good, he, I guess he's, if, if he wrote this movie like entirely himself, which I mean, that's probably not the case. I don't think a lot of people, people even do that, but like if he did the comedic parts, they were funny. But yeah, I mean, he's got that. Show. I don't. I can't speak to whether or not Key and Peele is a funny show, but I know it is a comedy sketch show. Yeah. So he's got comedy chops. And it's what's funny about that too is that the, the, I've only seen some of that, like clips from that show. Yeah, there's the one where he they did the, um, you know, what was it the, um, the cart? What's that cart? Aerobics, the aerobics uh, championships. You know that meme video that goes around. Yeah. Do 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 do. Well, they did a fucking skit with that, right? Where the guy's holding up cue cards for the one guy, that not the guy who directed this movie, the other one, the other black guy, Key. Yeah, and he's show and on the cue cards it's keep dancing. We got bad news. Your wife and your wife and kid were found dead. And it's like really, really dark, but they're all doing this to fucking aerobics. Yeah, and yeah. It, and he's like, the police want to know, and these are all on the cue cards. Do you know anybody who would want to do that? And he looks back at Peel, right? That's his name. Yeah. And he goes, and he looks at, and he, like he winks at him, and he's like, and you know, the music gets like, I mean, it's getting really like dark and weird, and. In the background, you got everyone doing aerobics going, do 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 It was hilarious. But that was like, all of his, I, well, this is the only movie I've seen of his. Like, I, I refuse to watch that other movie. Get Out? Yeah. We're like, it's a good movie. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. So it's, it's like the opposite. Like, it's, the scary parts are, okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What I hate about horror movies is when I what I hate about anything is if I can see the if I can see the twist coming a million miles away and I did. So can, can, may I spoil this movie? Yeah, I, I already know some spoilers okay. for it. In the very beginning of the movie, it's a little girl with her parents and they're at a fair on the boardwalk. She, uh, she she gets away from her parents. She's walking by herself, uh, and she walks into the beach sees a hall of mirrors. She goes in the hall of mirrors. She eventually gets to a reflection that isn't a reflection. It's like a copy of her. Right. Right. When the, and then she screams, cuts to black, cuts to a bunch of rabbits in cages on a big wall. And I'm like, well, that's weird. But anyway, when it cut and then, it, and then it shows her, I think it should, I think after that it shows her as a kid in like a, psychiatry office and i go and she's acting weird and i'm like that's not her whatever that whatever that copy is was the one who actually escaped who went back with the parents is the one that came out you know blah 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 and yes that is the stinger at the end where she realizes that she was the one who's the copy the whole time and i'm like it has no real basis on like the main plot it's just the you know, it's it's Jason coming out of the lake 
yeah. kind of thing. But still, the fact that I even called it at all was lame. And well, I mean, actually, it does have a lot to do with the plot. Now I, I take that back. But you don't really find out until the last like three minutes or whatever. <laughs> Excuse me, my nose is running. <laughs> anyway, so you know, then she's an adult, with her own family. They're going to a. Um, the husband wants to go to their beach house. That's by the same area, the boardwalk. And she's like, I don't want to go. That place freaks me out. She tells him the story. He never knew. He goes, well, you know, it's time to face your fears. You know, all that stuff. There's no way that any of that happened. Blah, 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 blah. They go. They meet up with uh, my favorite guy on the planet. Uh, Tim Heidecker. Tim Heidecker. I love him so much. He's the greatest. His comedy is just brilliant. Uh, I stay up every night to watch uh, Tim and Eric awesome show. I was the first in line to buy tickets for um, Tim and Eric's million dollar movie. Uh, I laughed, cried, and came and shit my pants in the theaters watching that movie. <laughs> it's just a, uh, and then I bought it on Blu-ray. I bought it on DVD first, and then I bought it on Blu-ray, and I watched it at the same time, like slightly out of sync. Yeah. I, I highly recommend it. It's very funny. Nice. You must be really happy that he got Sam Hyde canceled off of Adult Swim. Oh, yeah. Oh, mwah. I mean, you know, he's just a be- beautiful, um, just just a genius stroke of pure uh, uh, business sense to do that to a fellow comedian who's just trying to make nonsensical stuff that doesn't uh, align with your uh, politics. Just beautiful. I mean... If I could do it, I would. I would cancel a lot of people if I had the chance. Uh, Did you see that video I shared by that one comedian? No. Ooh. It's like a documentary on like an internet tattletale, and he's just like, I've actually never created anything. I like th- taking things that other people create and try to you know ruin their lives over it. I meant to I watch to one that. Day, I hope to one day get pussy for doing this. Oh, man. Yeah, I would have. Yeah. I don't agree what? with that guy. I don't agree. Why? Why? <laughs> well, because... Uh, I mean, because he's obviously making fun of people who do that, but really, those are the real heroes. Yeah, of course. The the real point of comedy is to not be funny. The real point of comedy is to scold other people for uh, how they live their lives not five years ago. Right. I mean, the best best way to make this country better, and in fact, the world, is to dig as far back into someone's past as possible. The farther, the better. Yeah, I agree. The farther better, find some offhand comment they made, like on a day that maybe their mother died, and just fucking drill them. Drill them until they've lost everything they've ever worked for, and then piss on their corpse. Anyway, so, yeah, they meet up with them, and I guess that's, that. Might, if there's any wokeness in this movie, it's that, that the white family is like really wealthy, but very unhappy and bratty. I mean, whatever. So then they go back. They, they spend some time at the beach. They go back to their beach house. The kid looks out the window. There's f- a family out there, and that's the copies of them. Or should I say us? <laughs> <coughs> so then that's where the movie starts getting creepy and weird, because you're like, okay, what the fuck? Who are these people? Why do they look like them? Why do they act ret- Tarted and or animalistic like they're kind of like the opposites of each of these people like the daughter is like nice so the copy of her is a like a literal psycho murderer the the kid his quirk quirky thing is like he's like a magician and so then hit the copy of him is like a fucking animal like like a, a pyromaniac animal <laughs> and the, the husband Wait, what? yeah the husband it's copy it's like this hulking retard, and well, I already kind of spoiled it, but like the the woman's copy, who really is the real the real person, talks with this weird like raspy voice. It's it was a little co- comedic, but like like not, Macy Gray. Yeah, exactly like Macy Gray. So so basically, like, for the next like forty five minutes or whatever, you're like, you know, they're trying to escape these, and then like. They hear on the news. They go to like they go to that white family. Oh no! They they cut to the white family, and then there's copies of them. So you're like, wait. So there's not there's not only just copies of this this woman's family. There's copies of this family too for some reason. And then they catch it on the news. There's copies of 
everybody running around, just murdering people. Now, I forgot in the very beginning, since it was back in the 80s when they show her as a little girl, there, she, there was just, there's just like um, a very quick commercial for Hands Across America. Hands Across America, yeah. Yeah. So you see all these people who are in red jumpsuits, for whatever reason, uh, holding hands. You know, like Hands Across America. I'm like, all right, that's also How do you even master ball this? weird. <laughs> so you know. Okay. Uh, does, does, uh, does she want to come on the show? No. I'm just trading Pokemon. Oh. <laughs> so. So, man, so still, I'm still digging it. I'm like, all right, this is super strange. And then they did that thing that no horror movie should do, and they explain too much where you're asking why too many times, and then wondering and then saying aloud none of that makes any fucking sense so the copies are clones of everyone on the surface i guess every single person on the surface not maybe they don't say whether this is just copies of the people in the town or everyone right and they live i in, think it's implied that like it's everyone in america yeah and they live in underground bunkers and they are they were made to puppet the to to control the people on the surface they were puppets made to control people on the surface like you know like the Illumin it's like illuminati shit yeah yeah but they have but they they, they show the copies like they show the people on the surface at the carnival and then they show these people like there's people in a roller coaster on the surface and there's people in a room going ah, ah, like with their arms but uh, in okay. one place and you're like okay that's weird uh, but why? <laughs> How does that work? And then they talk about, I mean, it basically just raises all these questions. Like they were abandoned and you're like, okay, what did they eat? If they're that retarded, how did they live? How did they take care of themselves? Where did they get those red jumpsuits from? Did, did they sew them all themselves? If they could escape the bunkers at any time, cause there was no guards, like the woman when she goes into the when she when she finds the house of mirrors again goes in it she just walks right through the front door into like a very long fucking staircase and escalators and stuff and gets there what was keeping any of these people from leaving before like when did they get abandoned did they get abandoned recently or or back when when the little girl that the scariest thing is not knowing the answers to those questions no that's stupid because that's what fucking I watched I watched Red Letter Media's review of it and Mike's saying all that stuff like. Uh, just don't take it literally. Uh, if you're if you're if you're if you're asking those kind of questions, you're a retard or whatever the fuck he said. And I'm like, fuck you, Mike, you piece of shit. And it's like he, you rip apart Marvel movies for the same fucking reasons, asshole. <laughs> I like Mike. I like Mike too, but he is an asshole. <laughs> That's why I like him. Yeah. Anyway, so they do all. So none of that makes any fucking sense. None of it. And then and then when you find out that you know she's the she was the actual woman. They, fought. I don't know. I think I think they're the they're, only thing I know about this movie is what I've seen from someone walking through the Universal Halloween Horror Nights haunted house version of it. Uh, anyway, I thought it was stupid. <laughs> yeah. At the end, I thought it was stupid, and I'm like, well, that was a waste of fucking two hours. Bet you can't wait for Candyman. No, I can I can wait because the original Candyman is perfect. I yeah, I just great. saw that movie. For the first time a couple months ago, and it's fucking perfect. Yep. And I can't wait for... Because the reasons why that movie was perfect, because it was made during a time where people had no... F where movie make, movie people had, had, like, they had no scruples at all. Because, I mean, they, they're fucking filming this in an actual ghetto, in an actual yeah, building. Yeah. That was, like, I thought it was yeah, perfect set dressing. Yeah, did they get, like, shot a bunch of times filming that movie? As they were leaving on the final day, their van did get shot at... Yeah. Whether it was multiple shots or not, and whether that actually happened, I don't know. Well, get ready for that movie, but with way less subtlety. That's like I was talking maybe to... Maybe more I was talking, subtlety, who knows? I was talking to Kate about the Twilight Zone episode, and she's like, one out of the ten of them was good. Yeah. They actually had an episode where Rod Sterling appears as a ghost to oh. one of the writers of the show screaming at her acting irrationally and i'm like ron Ster i've seen interviews with rod sterling he was like very very articulate very calm very intelligent uh oh whole... rod sterling was a, was the one screaming yeah oh that's what i'm saying this is i'm just this is what how she explained it to me 
it made it sound very bad. <laughs> and I'm just like, and you know, she said, you know, the end is it basically he, he, he approves the show of its wokeness, the new show. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh... I can't wait until we get out of this self-congratulatory bullshit fucking era of TV and movies. Cause I hate it. It's like the new Picard show. Oh yeah. Apparently that's bad. Well, I mean, we all knew it would be bad. No, I know. Any sane but... person would know that the show was going to be bad. Yeah, I know. Apparently, it had like it had a show right in the middle. Stuff. It had like it had one episode that because even Kate said, "Oh, you know that was pretty good. Maybe it'll get better." And it, it took a fucking nosedive right immediately after that. It's pretty bad when Seth MacFarlane's making a better Star Trek show than the actual Star Trek people are. So I was watching a video of cartoon pilots, and I knew about that. Larry and whatever that was on like Cartoon yeah. Network, but he had made an yeah, earlier, oh yeah cartoons. He made an earlier pitch that was like more adult than that one with the same yeah. two characters. Now I was like, well, I've never seen that. I guess I could watch that. Uh, the very beginning of it is them watching television, and it's it felt like ten minutes of of a Star Trek episode. Like I mean, no, I mean literally, they're watching Star Trek, and it's like. Well, Captain, we can't do that. I mean, it's just, it's no jokes. It's just him in his chair wigging out. Because, you know, <laughs> you, you know, because Captain Kirk, uh, what's his name? William Shatner's a William goofy Shatner. William Shatner's a goofy actor. He really acts over the top. And I turned it off. I'm like, oh, so he was always garbage. I was just too young to notice or t- to notice that the show was bad when it was on. <laughs> the first time around the first few seasons of family guy are all right i doubt it i think if i watched it now i would think they were crap maybe i don't know plus i have that show to blame for for um getting christina and i together originally (laughs) oh is that so i haven't heard this story (laughs) i we went to high school together but i never really talked to her but i i liked her i never really talked to her so apparently the last day which i don't remember And then when I was going to college, it wasn't freshman year, it was sophomore year. I was walking back to my car, and she was was walking to her classes. We were passing each other. We were were about to pass each other on the sidewalk, and and we both recognized each other. And we just started talking, and somehow I brought it. You were like, holy crap, Christina. Remember that time I wanted to stick my dick in your pooper? Yeah, and I did it. Right there in the public space. No, somehow I mentioned Family Guy. And I mentioned that I have all the DVDs because when they when the DVDs came out, I bought them all because I loved the show at the time. And she goes, "You have them? I gotta come over. We gotta watch them." And I and I was like, "Good, good, 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 girl." Because I mean, I never that was like I never had any girl show any interest in me yeah. <laughs> like that to want to come over to my room, you know, my bedroom to watch cartoons. And that was, I think, the second time we got together. She brought over Golden Boy and Ping Pong Club. Oh wow! Yeah, and so I didn't. I sat in the opposite corner of the room on the floor with a with a boner. And I don't <laughs> want to be anywhere near her. <laughs> you're a, you're an Alabama boomer, and you. Oh, oh my god! I, I'm an Alabama comer, and I want to be free. And I want to and I want to I want to be skeet. I want to I want to skeet free. Uh, I want to come I, I was... come. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I want to come, 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 come. Uh, <laughs> what were you gonna say? <laughs> I was killing myself laughing yesterday at work, coming up with Boulevard of Broken Cream, and my coworker <laughs> just had to look at me with silent judgment because he knew what the joke was. That was so funny. I, I didn't get it right like, away. I didn't get it right away until I got to the last line. I'm like, oh. Well, yeah, see, see, that's why it's such a great joke because, it, <laughs> it, you know, you're like, where is this going? Because you don't hear the song no. when you're reading the text and then you get to the last line and you're like, oh, and it recontextualizes everything. It's like Get Out or Us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, come out and come. I also love how I said I was going to bake my cum in a creepy crawler's oven and someone was just like, where did these thoughts go before Twitter? And I'm just like, in the trash. Um, oh, yeah, creepy cummers. Creepy cummers. <laughs> oh, I didn't, even, I didn't even post this joke because we were talking about... I don't even remember what we were fucking... Oh, yeah, because he was trying to say milk is better... Milk is good for you, and he he lives on a farm. And I'm like, well, you have you have everything to fucking 
gain by lying about the benefits of milk. You live on a farm. You're you're working for big dairy. And I'm like, how about this, smart guy? If milk is so great, then how come how come PepsiCo and, and Coke make their own water, but they don't make their own milk? Like, why isn't there mountain cream? <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's if Pepsi made their own milk. And it's named after the, like Mountain Dew. It's named after the dew that appears on the mountain in the morning. And it's like, you've, and he's like, I've never heard of Mountain Cream. And I'm like, you've never woken up. You've never gone camping and woken up super early to go jack off in the in the woods yeah. alone well, because you don't want everyone to judge you and no. you see the fresh cream. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to come in a. He doesn't have to come in the woods. He can come in any animal he chooses. Right. <laughs> right. I just love you never gone camping and went to go masturbate in the woods alone so no one will judge you. Like the mountain dude. Wake up like, like early the, and go and jerk off in the woods. Yeah. And why and it's and use nature's use nature's uh, toilet paper to clean yourself up leaves. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where mountain cream comes from. That's yeah. that's that's the energized milk that PepsiCo makes under the Mountain Dew label. Mountain shouting. That's that's what you do when you come in the, in the uh, mountains. Yeah. Uh, mountain, <laughs> mountain creaming, <laughs> meat, meat and cream. I don't know. I thought of one based on mountain shouting for cream, and I could I can't remember what it was now. Um, doctor, doctor, come, doctor, comer, uh, Mister, Mister Jizz instead of Mister <laughs> Pib. <laughs> What's Jizz Extra instead of Pib Extra? <laughs> oh, God! Oh, I got root beer in the Pepsi fridge. Blue, it's Pepsi White. Ew. We were also talking about Bionicles, and I told him about that joke that I said about Jason, where it's like, the white one didn't start out white. <laughs> the brown oh, one didn't start out brown. Oh, either. God. Oh, my God. I was asking, he didn't know what the brown note was. So I'm like, you don't know about the brown note? And then that led to me going, man, I wish there was a white note or a yellow note. <laughs> Ooh. I wish there was a tone you could hear that just makes you cum. That'd be that's cool. what I mean, the white I know, one, yeah. that's what I just said. I know that's what you said. I'm agreeing, and I wish there was one. We should find it. Uh, speak- we should dedicate the rest of this podcast to trying to find the note that makes you come. Okay, I don't have much like of a range. But let's let's start right now. The funny thing is, the white note is just the entirety of the song. Uh, I try to say goodbye and I choke by Macy Gray. <laughs> I tried to, to say goodbye. goodbye. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Why are you singing it like Randy Newman? I tried, I tried to, to say goodbye. goodbye. Ch- why is why is everyone's Randy Newman impression a retard? Because he's a retard. Oh yeah, I forgot. Trying to walk away in a jumbo. Fuck it up. Try to walk away. Try to fuck a girl in a jumbo. <laughs> Puked? No, it means his cum is chunky. Ew. Ew! No! You've never tried chunky cum before? I'm not, I've done it like a couple times. Yeah, dude, you go to the grocery store, you pick up a jar of <laughs> chunky cum. Ugh. Put it on a fluffer nutter. It's like, uh. <laughs> get it? It's get like it? Arch- Yeah, I get it. Because nutter. Oh, cool! It's like it's like a pulp. <laughs> Corey, Corey named her C dot in her Pokemon game Nutfucker. <laughs> Nutfucker. And I named my low tad Desposito. <laughs> I I said we were playing in bed and I caught a low tad. I'm like, should I name my low tad Jorge or Desposito? And she's like, babe, shut up. And I'm like, Desposito it is. That's not the same, but I I gave Christina the choice of watching uh, Alien or Hondo. And she goes, well, I know I'll like Alien. I was like, well, Hondo it is. Because <laughs> neither, neither of us had seen Hondo. Right. I can talk about Hondo right now. Yeah, sure. Hondo is care. a John Wayne movie. Uh, John Wayne Western. Apparently, it was the first Western he had done for in three years. It's all right. The reason why I even got it, we were at, we were at the secondhand store, and I saw Hondo, John Wayne, and Christina goes... But Peg Hondo, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> She's like, I don't know, but like, uh, uh, there's an episode of Married with Children where Al Bundy is trying to watch Hondo on TV, but there's like, you know, he has to go to the store and he gets trapped in the store, and when, you know, and he's just always whining about seeing Hondo. I'm like, well, I guess I'm getting this movie because I never heard of this movie, and if Al Bundy loves it, <laughs> I'll watch it. 
and it was all right. I mean, it's like, it's apparently there's there's an introduction with um I forget his name, some fucking critic, uh who actually did the introduction for the Linkara. searchers too. Yeah, Linkara. It's it's Linkara shows up and he's like. I think John... I started doing it before. Yeah, this is John. Uh, this is a John Wayne movie, and he doesn't like women or minorities. Uh... Linkara strikes me as the person whose dad would name him John Wayne, like John Wayne Gacy, <laughs> in hopes that he would grow up to be a big, strong man, and he just <laughs> didn't. Doesn't. This is the movie, though. Have you ever seen that clip of when the kid is telling John Wayne he can't swim, and then John Wayne oh. throws oh, him into the river? Into the... Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. this okay. movie. Nice. So, like, anyway, apparently this is, like, one of the first movies that didn't just have Native Americans as the bad guys, like, flat-out bad guys, but, like, it kind of sh- paints everyone as, like, more or less human. I mean, it's still kind of, like, it's still a little, I, I, it's still kind of a goofy movie, and I'm not really sh- sure. Oh, I love a goofy movie. I also love an extremely goofy movie. I don't like that movie. I mean, like, it, the first 30 minutes are just him helping out on a woman's farm that he comes across, and just... I don't know. It was. I liked it. I recommend people watch it. It was just like it's not my favorite western or anything. I mean, the way I, I didn't know what to expect when the writers, the writers of Married with Children, have Al Bundy saying it's the greatest western ever <laughs> made. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what is this movie? I liked it. I recommend it. It was only an hour and a half, which is always a plus. <laughs> yeah. So that's I just assume all movies are an hour and a half. Yeah, well, because you stop watching them after an hour and a half, whether they're done or not. <laughs> yeah, Matt, that was a funny joke. Thanks, Matt. I'm going to continue and talk about McMillions. McMillions is a movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a show, actually. What about you? You got another thing? Let's go back and forth. Let's, have, let's, let's play uh, hacky sack with the podcast. Wait, hold on. Let me see what I... Oh, I, I watched the Dragon Quest movie on Netflix. Oh, good Lord. So, yeah. may I complain about that movie first? Hold on, you're breaking up for me. Am I? Uh, yeah, it's probably just on my end, though. It might be, because I, yeah, my, it just says voice. Con- I said, may I complain about that movie for a second? Yeah, sure. My complaint is probably your positive, is that it should look like Toriyama's art. Yeah. Continue. Because basically only because it just makes it look generic. I didn't watch it or anything. I just saw some of the trailer. I'm like, well, that just looks generic. It looks a hell of a lot less ugly than that Pokemon movie remake they just released. But Jesse looks hot. Jesse looks hot. That's the one thing. Oh, all right. That's literally it. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Everyone else looks like a weird fucking, like, they look like the Who's from the Jim Carrey Grinch movie. They also look like, uh, um, what was his name before he was uh, (laughs) Jimmy Neutron? Johnny Quasar. Oh, uh, uh, Jimmy Negron. Yeah, yeah. They do look like Johnny Quasar, yes. <laughs> All right, tell me. Tell me about this movie. Uh, I never played a Dragon Quest game because no one actually does. I've played three of them. Well, America. I've watched Kate play three of them. That They don't count. She lives oh. in Canada. Um, oh, okay, okay. People don't actually play Dragon Quest games in America, no matter how many times they tell me it's sold five million copies. I just assume that's one lonely fucking loser who bought five million copies of Dragon Quest Eleven. Just Kate. Uh, or the warehouse bought them back to make it seem like that game sold a lot. Because again, <laughs> Dragon Quest is a series that everyone tells me is great uh, on the internet, but I have never met a real life person who's actually played Dragon Quest. Uh, anyway. right, look, I can tell you, like, I mean, it's not the same. Like, I didn't play them, but uh, what was it? I think we played one, two, and three. And I, I mean, we played. I played. We played the version of three that's on fucking 3ds. They're right. fine. I'm sure they're fine. <laughs> yeah. No, no one plays them, though. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what the story of Dragon Quest V is, which is what this movie is supposed uh, to be. Me neither. But um, it was fine. I liked it. A lot of people hate the ending. I thought it was fine. Do you want me to spoil what the ending is? Oh, please. Okay. So they're about to fight the big bad final boss, and then everything freezes and then this weird, like, blocky tower comes out of the sky where the final boss is supposed to come out, and it's a computer virus. And you find out that the guy who is the main character is actually just some random Japanese dude who is playing the game in virtual reality at some place, and he's only been playing for, like, two hours, despite it seeming like it was taking multiple years because he's got his wife pregnant and all this shit. Uh, and then the virus was put in there by the programmer to be like, get a life loser. Uh, and he basically is like, yeah, fuck you for enjoying this game. And then uh, a slime that was hanging around with that guy the whole game is like, I'm actually the antivirus. Now kill him. 
Uh, and I thought that was fine. I thought that twist that it's actually just a VR version of Dragon Quest V that some guy is playing was fine. Sounds but gay. A lot of people seem to a lot of people seem to hate that twist. Oh, sounds gay. Sounds hack and gay. A little, but it, I didn't think it was executed all that badly. But that's maybe because I read a bunch of people on the internet saying like, "Oh, when I got to that part, yeah. and I was like, what part?" And no one would tell me. So I'm like, I guess I'm watching this movie. <laughs> it was fine. I enjoyed it. Not the greatest, but you know, it was cool. Didn't make me want to play Dragon Quest because nothing will. Did but fuck. Well, yeah, yeah. Did it make you come? Uh, uh, the the chick was hot. You'd like the chick that he marries because she's like a warrior chick. Nice. Oh, fucking! Yeah. I want to watch this show. Um, what's it called? It's something hetero. <laughs> like it's actually something. Is that that thing that I saw you post where it's like an extremely muscular woman with a tiny head? Oh hell yeah, dude! It's like a three D anime. So what's funny about that is you're diseased. Yeah. What's <laughs> funny about that is that a guy that that I used to work with who who was uh, subsequently uh, fired. <laughs> He was, he was future endeavored from the company. Um, he told me to read that manga a couple of years ago. He told me about it. But he failed to mention that it is full of muscular women. If he right. only knew. If he had known that I'm into that, because I'm at work. I don't really necessarily talk about that kind of stuff at work. Not really. Um, I, would, I would have read that a lot sooner, <laughs> let me tell you. Anywho. I want to watch that, but it's not on anything yet. I think it's supposed to be on Netflix. Like, it's out, but it's not on any of our things yet. Right. Uh, if we're going to be talking about anime, which I brought it up myself. Oh, no, you brought it up. I guess that's technically anime, that movie you watched. I watched... Yeah. I watched two anime. Uh, three anime. You know what? Actually, I could add another thing to my fucking list right here. Damn. Man, I've been wasting a lot of my life. Uh, I, wa <laughs> I watched... No, not Bubble Bum. Bubble Cum. I watched Bubble Gum Crisis. Right. Bubble Gum uh, uh, Crisis. Gubble Bum. I watched Bubble Gum Crisis, Ghost in the Shell, Sword Art Online, Ghost in the Shell. No, what's it called? It's standalone Complex. And uh, Read or Die. Okay. Funny story about Read or Die. I, uh, for, for at least a decade, I've been getting that show confused with Mouse. Because both, both shows have an acronym for their title. It's R O D, read or die, and mouse M O U S E, whatever the acronym for that is. Mouse is yeah. complete horseshit, garbage, poopy pants. Uh, where like it maybe I would find it. F oh no! I actually did try watching the first episode again, and it is still bad. It's like a harem anime, and like the one character's okay. in the intro, the one character's tits literally spin around like a clock. Like it's, <laughs> it's like that bad animation tit bounce wacky bullshit yeah yeah because i'm like you know back then I, I hated that kind of stuff and like that's actually it was one of the last straws watching that was one of the last straws for why i got out of anime because this is before like the only way i could watch anime i wasn't aware of torrents so the only way i was able to watch anime was either renting it from netflix or literally buying it so like i bought mouse i rented samurai gun you know all these like really stupid stupid fucking anime and i just had to stop because i'm like well, waste this is like expensive <laughs> <clears throat> so i watched reader die first episode was great I have you ever seen that show i haven't but i heard of it so i don't know i don't i didn't look in to see the history of it because like a lot of these fucking animes there was like you know there's like 40 volumes of a manga and ovas before the anime even got started kind of horse shit so I don't yeah. know where this lies within the pantheon of read or die material that's probably out there, but the first episode is the right. It's she's the main character is a writer. She I think she's Chinese. She flies into Japan, gets off of her plane, and her apartment explodes because apparently whatever whatever kind of material she writes incites violence sometimes. Okay. Apparently. So then she goes to the detective agency, which is the three other characters, the three women, who have, uh, I mean, the, the main shtick of the show is that they have, like, paper powers. I forget what they actually called it. Maybe it was, like, papermancy or some shit. They have, like, psychic powers that control paper, specifically. Yeah. And, and at the end of the episode, uh, it's found out that those, the... The guy who tried to blow, who tried to kill her in her apartment and then tries to kill her at her book signing really was just a, a, was just a, a failed writer who was just jealous. 
And there's actually two of them. So the first one, the brother, goes to the book signing, tries to blow her up. And, it's, and the, the three detective women stop him with their paper powers. And it was cool. The animation's actually really cool in this first episode. And then she takes, she's taking her flight back. And then there's, it's revealed that there, there was two bombers and the brother's on the plane. And he tries to blow up the plane. But the two, the three women are in a giant bird made out of paper. And they fly, <laughs> and they fly, and then they, they like, try to land the plane in, like, the big hollowed out bird made out of paper. But then they cut off the wings because it was too heavy. All this kind of shit. It was cool. It was really cool. I really liked the first episode. And then the next two episodes happened where uh, I've never wanted to, like, kill myself more watching <laughs> something so bad. Yeah. Where the first, the second episode, so this the main character is a cunt. She's, like, the cunty kind of woman character in these. You know, it's, it, yeah. it's supposed to be self-sufficient, I don't need nobody to take care of me character, but it just comes off as just really cunty and bad. Yeah, well, that's what they all are. Right. So she's in her apartment or new house or whatever. These, and it's she's told that these three detectives are going to be her bodyguards. They're also big fans of hers, and they they read voraci- voraciously. They can't stop reading, uh, which makes sense, right? Because they control paper, which is funny to me because they literally destroy books to use their paper powers, which is another retarded thing. But in this episode, they literally the whole episode is them in her apartment trying to get her to agree that they could be her bodyguards and they try to do nice things for her but it's on the level of uh if this one character who i liked originally because she was just kind of weird and tall you know ma- masculine yeah uh, and <laughs> like millie from fucking trigun oh god i want to fuck millie so bad <laughs> i really really do like you have no I, idea like Look, I understand the desire for muscular women, but I need them to be shorter than me, like B from Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Sword exclusively. She's only in that one. Is that the, the is that the white one that's tan? Yes. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I'd fuck her too. Anyway, um, no, so so the tall one who's like who, who's quirky. Uh, there's there's a difference between being quirky and being so literally brain dead retarded that you should be in a hospital because yeah. she thought. A nice thing to do would be to clean her apartment. Great. Uh, but her idea of cleaning her apartment is is getting rid of all of her furniture. Right. And she doesn't understand that that's not what you do. That's yeah, a normal st- Japanese person, literally autistic, doesn't know how to, like, you know, infer anything. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> so, yeah, retarded. And I'm like, that's that's not funny. Like, this episode's supposed to be funny. I'm like, that's not funny. That's stupid. And <laughs> that's then this, not funny. That's ableist. Yeah. And then the third episode is, like, more of that kind of crap. So I even, right. I fast forward through it. I got to, and then I'm fast forwarding through the fourth episode, and I see a guy bleeding on the ground of a library, a floor library. I'm like, oh, 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 oh my god, something's happening, something's happening, and and it was stupid, and I stopped watching it. And I wish I could get more into it because I want more of that first episode, but I can't be fucking bothered. <clears throat> so that was crap. Speaking of Pokemon girls, we'd stick our dicks in. I was watching, mm. um, I was watching Nude Clan stream live on Twitch do their episode last night while I was at work. And uh, they were reviewing Pokemon Sword and Shield, coincidentally. And I said in the chat, I'm like, I'd let Marnie step on my nuts. And then the one guy was on there. He's like, yeah, me too, A4. I'd let her step on my nuts too. And then Caleb Craig just like sighs. And there's a few seconds of silence. And he's like, she's like 10. And? <laughs> I know. Which one's that? The my black coworker, one? My coworker died laughing at that, though. No, uh, yeah, it's the goth chick. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. That's, hell yeah. No, it's no. There is no canonical age for her. That's I what looked. I said. Yeah. That's what, exactly what I said. And then my, my co-worker, me and my co-worker were talking, I forget. Um, I said, no, I help other people. I lift other people up. I say things like, I want a 10-year-old to step on my nuts, and then other people can make jokes off of that. I I am a good person. He's yeah. like, you probably shouldn't say you want a 10 year old to step on your nuts in public. And I'm like, I'm not saying it in public. I say it to people. I trust like you or my rabbi. I'm not and then he looks at me for a second and I go, by the way, I'm not Jewish. I, I know I make a lot of jokes about me being a pedophile, but that doesn't mean I'm Jewish. <laughs> I was just, I was going to say, uh, no, I, I didn't say, I, I didn't say I wanted to step on my balls in public. I wanted to step, I wanted to step on my balls in the privacy of my own bedroom. <laughs> yep. Now getting fucked by fourteen werewolves in public—that's a different story. Oh yeah, dude! Hell yeah! You know that shirt, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, just checking. I knew it was from something. I couldn't remember from what. Yeah. 
Uh, there, I don't no, think there's not many there's not many Poke Girls I wouldn't want to fuck. Uh, to yeah. be honest. Oh uh, yeah, really. It's like one of those. It's 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 a low key. Pokemon is one of the most low key horny on main games I think ever. Well, they said that on the in the review last night on their podcast. Someone said like Pokemon's entire goal is like early sexual awakening. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, it's like you can make like Marnie. She has no canonical age. Misty, on the other hand, you could go to jail for because she's supposed yes. to be eleven or something like that, which is disgusting. There's no way that woman's eleven. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Jesse's fifteen, I think, or sixteen, which is great because my dad used to get like real horny for her. Hey, I should send him a picture. Look, of the, of the, the Japanese, the, the Japanese are completely depraved, and they know everyone else on the planet is too. That's why they do this. That's why we they draw sexy eleven-year-olds, into... huh? We bombed them into enlightenment. Yes. That's the right. That's see. That's the kind of woke third country, and they were like, "What if we uh, fuck the children?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I wanted to learn Cantonese so I can like up my uh, my Chinese accent game. It's too hard. <laughs> yeah. It's too hard because I really wanted to be like. I, I just really wanted to bust out this like because th- their word to call someone a stupid bitch like in, a direct translation is is uh is like dirty pig or something like that oh god oh it's so funny it's really wow. funny don't they just say the n-word all the time in that language Isn't uh, that like their version of um i don't know <laughs> but i was talking my friend is learning cantonese and i was telling him about that not i didn't tell him it was because i was at work i didn't tell him the reason why is because i want to i want to have a better racist accent <laughs> i just said i was looking at cantonese curse words and they're really funny and he goes, yeah, there's one, like, you can't, there's one that you cannot use. Because, like, there's a difference between saying fuck and then saying, like, like literally you want that person's mother to get fucked to death or something. It's, like, it's insane. It's nuts. Yeah. Anyway. What else did I watch? What else did you watch? I went, now you go. Uh, I beat Hypnospace Outlaw. That game's good. What the fuck is that? That I told you. That's the one where you're exploring, like, oh. 1999 internet. Like, yeah. the alternate world. Yeah. Um, I like that game. And what was I just thinking about? What was I? What? Oh, hold on. Well, I'll go Hold next. Uh, Bubblegum Crisis. I've seen Bubblegum Crisis 2041 or whatever the hell. It was like the, the 90s one of Bubblegum Crisis. And I liked it. But I've never seen the original Bubblegum Crisis, which, again, I assume is the original Bubblegum Crisis. This is the OVAs. It's a Blu-ray with eight OVAs on it. Like, the first episode was an hour. The next two episodes were... <coughs> half hour each i've only seen the first two yeah. episodes or first two ovas and uh i i can't since it's like from the 80s i can't say the plot is all that engaging but it's the, the anime i just love that animation from that time period the backgrounds the yeah the backgrounds are just beautiful like and the, i just like that design i like those kind of designs for characters like yeah. fucking uh, uh, tank police, you know that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. But what's really... I, I keep seeing clips from the fucking Inhuman Anime Girl sounds Twitter, and it's just like, yes. am I the only one who thinks Love Live is incredibly creepy looking? Yeah, like they're too they're too moe. Yes. Well, that was I was telling Christina that was another reason why I got out of anime for a long time was because it just seemed like anything that anyone was ever talking about was like some weird moe crap. And yeah, I mean, like I've come to realize like. Stuff that I thought was Moe crap wasn't like like Lucky Star is Moe, but it's it's a comedy. Yeah, or and Madoka is Moe, but it's also brilliant. Bad. You meant to say <laughs> Shut up. Fuck bad. You. Oh, right. It's awful. And what else? A lot of that stuff. Like like a uh, 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 what was that other one? Shit. Dirty pair. What? Dirty pair. No, that's old. Anyway, uh, we're talking about eighties anime. I thought Lucky Star is not eighties. Oh, I, I thought you were going back to the thing. Where... I am now. I will now. So, Bubblegum Crisis. I just it's hilariously it's hilarious how, so it made me want to look up cyber like the origin of cyberpunk and like the uh, its uh, influence on Japanese culture because like it, it like it was like a two way street because like this movie this this show is so it's obviously influenced by uh, uh, Blade Runner. Because right. the character's name Pris and her band is called The Replicants. 
And, you know, I mean, like, come on. And, and like, the opening shot is of a big pyramid building. Like, yeah. <laughs> the music, even. The opening music. Not not the um, not the band, the her singing. The, the, the instrumental music is fucking Blade Runner. Like, you cannot mistake it. Right. But I'm like, well... No, I'm thinking like, well, Blade Runner was influenced by Asian cultures. So what was first? <laughs> like, what? Who did what first? I just went on Wikipedia, and I think from what I remember, because I was reading this at like two o'clock in the morning or something. Like, I woke up thinking I was in a cold sweat thinking about cyberpunk, and <laughs> and, 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 and it was just like it's it, cyber. The idea, I think, was coined by a British writer, which also you made woke sense. Up in a- you woke up in a cold sweat thinking about that chick with the dick from the video game that's coming out. Which one? On the on the soda ad or whatever. Oh Remember? hell yeah! Oh god. Yeah. Uh, that movie's awful. Uh, so what? what? Blade Runner twenty twenty forty? No, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. There's there's a there's an ad in the fucking game that was like a fake controversy last year where it's like a chick with a dick with oh, a clear I... bulge in her pants oh cool it's like change your ch- yeah i'm glad i didn't hear about that but i'm also sad yeah. that i didn't see it uh i can send it to you yeah you should oh what the fuck i just realized so <laughs> blade runner 2040 right that's what it's called uh 2049 oh okay because i just thought it was funny how it's bubblegum crisis 2041 anyway uh, and this bubblegum crisis takes place in the 2030s? Or no, that's Ghost in the Shell, actually. Ghost in the Shell's standalone complex takes place in, like, 2030s. Anywho. Uh, I, I think it was a British writer who, who started kind of the cyberpunk thing, which makes sense because of, of uh, Judge Dredd, which I never really sure. thought about as cyberpunk until I was like, oh, yeah, of course that's fucking cyberpunk. But, yeah, I mean, it's basically it influenced each other. A lot of a lot of influence during the '80s with the cyberpunk shit. Very interesting. I, I think cyberpunk started in like the '70s, maybe late '60s or some shit. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I like it. I, I'm like I said, it's not like it's not like the story's all that deep. Not yet. I mean, all the ovas are connected so far. Apparently, I like it. Uh, what else? Ghost in the Shell standalone complex is something that I watched before, and again, I liked it a lot. There's a few. Ep- there's like maybe one or two episodes I thought were shitty. And it's like a, like maybe one or two episodes that are well, probably the same episodes I thought were kind of shitty were like, you know that that show's kind of known for being, uh, uh, philosophical. Yes. And like those two, like the one or two episodes that I remember were just it was like a little on the nose and kind of over the top. Like, are we really who we are if our brains yeah. are not in our you know whatever? Who gives a shit? But uh, it's a great show. I want to watch the second season again. But it's, like, too expensive to try to buy. I might have to right. get it some other way. Uh, that's I. We're going to wrap this up because I feel another shit coming on. But uh, I, I remember the thing that I was just going to ask you. Did okay. I tell you? I asked, Did I ask you about Poppy? What? Your dad? Um, are, you, are you aware of the pop star Poppy? No. Like the weird internet pop star that's been around for years now? No. Not that I'm aware uh, of. Oh, okay. Well, there's, like, a weird YouTube pop star named Poppy. Um, and she just put out a metal album a couple months ago. <laughs> so is it bad? No, I like it. I like it more than I thought I would anyway, based on like, oh, Poppy, that weird internet chick made a fucking metal album. Sure. Although I sent the one track to Alex and he's like, this is just baby metal. Like this is oh. ripping off baby metal so hard, but not all the tracks on the album are like that. So yeah, I don't like baby it, metal. It's at just all. like the first one. Uh. No, you know, I, I like this better than I thought I would, honestly. Okay. I don't think you'd like it, but it's interesting. I actually did sure. recently. I, I, I thought it was so like I forgot about Metalocalypse and I was listening to the songs. I like Metalocalypse. Hell yeah. And I'm like, the music, I mean, and I'm like, well, so why don't I like other metal kind of stuff? And I'm listening, I'm trying to listen to other metal and I'm just, I, I don't like it because it's not funny. <laughs> right. Yeah. Metalocalypse kind of has that satire. Yeah. Like the music's good and it. it's got the satire. And I'm like, I try to listen yeah. to real metal and I'm like, this isn't funny. <laughs> yeah. I can see you wanting it to not take itself as seriously as like, like amorphous. But even then, like the funnier stuff I try to listen to, like that, what's that one? Psycho Uh, Stick? No, no, no. The Arnold Schwarzenegger themed metal band. Oh, I didn't even know about that shit. Oh yeah. It's called like, uh, I forget. I'll, I'll, I'll try to find it, but it's like, that is meant to be funny, but then I don't like the music. 
Right. And so I'm just like, because mm. I don't know, like Metalocalypse doesn't sound like I know it's metal, but it's more like it's like Speed Led Zeppelin or something, you know? It's like death metal. E- sure, sure. Or like black metal almost. See, I don't like know the difference that's between kind of those stuff. thing. They're they're, they're kind of lampooning death and black metal okay. for, for the most part. So really uh, fast Led Zeppelin. Sure. Okay, <laughs> that's the only way I could describe. I don't know. It. I haven't heard a lot of the Metalocalypse stuff that like wasn't the song that's in Guitar Hero or like whatever's in the first season of the show. I only so. really listen to Thunder Horse and a Blood Recution and Mermaid or Mermaider. Yeah. It's so like far. mermaid murder. It's like mermaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can remember that episode. I hate you and I want you to die. <laughs> <laughs> I never really... voices are so easy to do too. Oh, it's so fun. Well, it's Brendan Small's guy, right? Or whatever. I don't know is. if he does all of their voices, yeah. but it, it's it's very easy to do all their voices. Just Every, once a... yeah. Every once in a while, planet piss. Every once in a while, you're just... a fucking douchebag. You douchebag. Every once in a while, I'll just go no. <laughs> Yeah, because I've seen it. Just why, why can't we play the guitars? Over? And then in Tokyo, you just do that higher point pitch. Like, yeah, yeah I don't know why Swiss do this. <laughs> I love the kitties. <laughs> Toki's the best. Toki is the best. He is literally the best character. I know. Murder Face is funny, but he, but Toki's the actual best character. Toki is the fucking Moe character. In yeah, <laughs> yeah, he really is. He is. <laughs> That's him. disgusting. Yeah. Uh, um, I should really watch. I should watch Metalocalypse again. I love that show. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I I really don't know what kind of metal I would ever recommend to you because I don't know what you'd like, especially based on that shit. Right. <laughs> like, maybe you would like Three Inches of Blood. There. Uh, did you ever hear the song Deadly Sinners? I think I tried listening. No. Okay. I saw them recommended like when I was listening to Metalocalypse stuff, but I don't think I listened to them yet. So I'll try. They're like really high, like the singer's really high pitched, but you might like it. They're, it's a lot of that like fantasy shit where it's like they have a song called Wicketron and it's like. <laughs> well, that's the thing like too. A... Like a lot of the titles, like the song titles for these these bands are really funny. <laughs> well, even then, just go listen to like Megadeth or something. You'd probably like that shit because eh. it's like l- less hardcore, it's, but like it's eh. still kind of silly because Dave Mustaine sounds like an idiot when he says. <laughs> Uh, I think it was Megadeth Hello, that did me. that. Uh, Meet the real me. I think Megadeth was the only one. It was the one that did the um, Duke Nukem theme. Uh, yeah. Duke, okay, yeah. But that's like, you don't hear Dave Mustaine singing in that. Yeah. Where, like, in, on like Rust in Peace, he sings a song called Five Magics, which is based on some fucking obscure fantasy series. And like, <laughs> like all nerds. Yeah, I know, but he didn't mean for this to sound stupid, but like there's a call and response <laughs> part in Five Magics where he's like... <laughs> Where he's like, uh, what's the lyric? It's just like, something in hellish torment. And then it's like, something in hellish torment. Oh. I master magics five. I master magics five. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It's well, I'll, great. I'll try to listen to that then, too. Rust in Peace is legit an amazing album. Okay. That's the one that Hangar 18's on. If you know, if you know Hangar 18 from like Guitar Hero. Mm, maybe. You, if you hear it, I'll you play know Guitar Hero too, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you'd recognize it when you hear it. It's like the second track on that fucking do, 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 do. <laughs> Um, Can I talk about the last four things real quick? Yeah, real quick. Well, how much do you have to shit? I can save these for next for next time. Maybe do that, because okay. it's coming. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Oh, well, it's all coming right, for next time, time, The Outsider, an HBO show, McMillions, another HBO show, Color Out of Space, the Nicolas Cage movie. And... Oh, man, I want to see that. It's good. Watch yeah, The Color sorry. Out of Space. My, I, Paul and Christina both didn't really care much for it. They didn't think it was bad. They just didn't think it was all that great. I loved it. Right. And The Wire. I'm watching. I'm currently watching The Wire. Oh, nice. Very good. People Very love good that show. show. It is a good show. I like it. But again, that was actually. it's funny. Paul and Christina don't actually dig that show too much either. And I bought frames for my posters, and I'm putting my posters in my frames. Yeah, I started doing that, too. I finally framed this Anamanaguchi poster I've had for seven years. <laughs> what a fag. All right. Yeah. So, I got a Scott Pilgrim poster I got a frame. I got a Shovel Knight poster from PAX that I got a frame. Did yeah, me that? too. Did you see that fucking Animal Crossing booth at PAX? Yeah, it was fucking amazing. I know. I don't know I anything kind of, about that I game. I kind I'm of like... miss going to PAX, but I don't. Yeah, I know. Um... I don't know anything about that game. I've been purposely uh, not. I don't want to know anything about it. Uh, and oh, the direct was good. I watched a. I watched a video of people at the New York Nintendo store reacting to the direct. It comes out the twentieth, right? Yep. Yeah, shit. Three three weeks. That's funny. 
I guess. Oh, so yeah. Next week. So not this week, but in Sunday, and then that week I'll be in Florida. And then wait a minute. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Hold on a sec. Uh, I'll, well, I'll check afterwards. I I think the day <laughs> I think the day Animal Crossing comes out is the day I'm supposed to give my sperm sample. Nice. <laughs> you're just gonna you're gonna nut t- every picture of Isabel. Why is Isabel so hot? I don't mean like her in-game model. I mean like when people draw her, she's so hot. I don't know because she's a secretary. I love that That's, fucking yeah. that 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 one frame from that Smash Brothers collab thing that the guy did, where he's like, and also Isabel. It's just Isabel's head on a realistic dog's body, and it says like, <laughs> Isabel, three apples high, makes you shoot cum into the sky. <laughs> The Super Smash Brothers collab on Newgrounds, and that was the one, that was the that was the short that that one guy did where like Sakurai gets fed up. He's like, "You have five minutes to come up with the next five DLC characters for Smash Brothers," and then like Inkling is like, "Yo, dog, I wish my mom was in this game." And it's oh just blooper shows up from Mario Brothers. He's like, "Oh, hey, mom, what's up, dude?" Oh, okay, I'm gonna watch that right after this thing. <laughs> I'll send it to you. It's so fucking fun. Watch the whole Smash Brothers collab. Okay. Or maybe, I think you already did because you hate that one where Bowser comes in Pac-Man's house and he's like, hey, what if I just took a big fat shit? Oh, yeah, that was awful. <laughs> that was so stupid. Did you ever see the one that the Evil did, though, where it's like, it's it's Yoshi punching Luigi and he's like, come on, dude, well, come on, fight. And then like Kirby's like, come on, Luigi, everyone's fighting now. It is the new cool thing to do. And then <laughs> Luigi like punches someone. And he's like, he hit me below the belt. So you... is this... Is the banner for we came up with two banners? <laughs> I don't even remember what the other one was. Yeah, I'm trying. It was that picture of John Carmack and John Romero, right? Oh, right. That's the but oh. also penis music. <laughs> the penis music one is for this one because it's let the penis music play. Yeah, right. Yes. And then, and then, and then what was it like? I'm looking it up. It's uh, the episode's called McClunky O'Clock. No, no. <laughs> uh, uh, um. The banner is us taking our Sonic masks off, like the like the us poster. That's what the banner was. But we're in that we're in the chamber for the pe- penis music. I've never seen Mega Mind, but I did, and I didn't remember that. <laughs> I didn't realize that was from Mega Mind until I saw it slowed down, and I was like, "Wow, Mega Mind is such an ugly movie." That because I thought that clip was just from some random like me too music video that no one had ever seen. Yeah, me too. Oh, I thought it was like maybe like for like a fucking like allergy medicine movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I mean. And then like I realized it from Mega Mind. I'm like, wow, that movie looks like fucking dog shit, doesn't it? <laughs> like every character design of that movie is so unappealing. It's crazy. They just give the main girl, like his girlfriend or whatever, like a five head. Yeah. The movie's good, though. I, I remember liking it a lot. I'm sure, You know what? But, like, that's the problem is that was, like, from that era right before or after DreamWorks started taking things seriously. And they just had, like, absolutely nothing yeah. creative in the pipeline where it's like, hey, monsters versus aliens. And it's like, I like no. that, too. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, I know, but it looks so boring. Whatever. Just don't be gay. We are taking our Sonic masks off. No, I said you have the Sonic us. mask. I have the Joker mask, but it's like the Us poster. We are taking our masks off like the Us poster. Uh, Matt has a Joker mask. Mitch has a Sonic mask. We are in the chamber from the penis music thing. <sighs> Who's Who is the warden and shit again? I'm looking and I'm trying to find it. Was it Isabel? Uh, well, yeah, I think we said it was Isabel and Doom Guy. Oh, okay. Isabel and Doom Guy are the wardens in the window. I love that video of Isabel having a date with Doom Guy, and she just gives him like a can of Monster. Oh my God, I love that. I love that the Doom Guy, the Doom fucking Twitter account is in on it. Yeah, saying like with, uh, on the direct, is Isabel gonna be there? <laughs> Like, that's so funny. You see the picture I drew of Isabel in, like, a Slayer costume? Like, like Slayer, like, t-shirt? No. You didn't see that? No. How did no one see that picture? What the fuck? I even drew, like, an alternate color variant of it where she has, like, dyed hair. Oh, fuck. Is it going to make me come? No. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, because all that stuff is true. Like, I wouldn't call myself, like, you know, 
What, what, what would you say I was like that Persona Four guy? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, Kanji. That's, that's cute. <laughs> I like that. But like, that, that, you shared that tweet of that guy who had like a picture of Isabel on like an AR camera on top of a Slayer poster. I'm like, I'm gonna draw that. Oh yeah. Um, but it's like you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm hyper masculine, but like I'm so excited to play fucking Animal Crossing. It Dude, looks fucking so cool. Bought a Switch for it. Like she, but she's, she's a never, girl. No, but she's never played an Animal Crossing. She like we're, we're sitting oh. in bed and she's like, she's like. uh Hey, do you have Animal Crossing? I'm like, what, the new one? She's like, yeah. I'm like, no, it doesn't come out for like a few weeks. And she's like, oh, are you going to get it? Yeah. Uh, can I play it? Yeah, sure. Can I have your Switch? No, but I'll buy you one if you want. <laughs> like, That's she bought one anyway. I was going to buy her one, but she just went out and bought it on Friday. Because I kept like saying, okay, when I get home from work, we'll go to Best Buy and get one. And then like she was like, I'm tired. <laughs> and then Friday, she's <laughs> like, I'm going to go pick one up after work. I'm like, all right, I was going to buy you one, but fuck it. Uh, I, I, I guess I do have a question about Animal Crossing. You might be able to tell me. Does it have any online support? Can I like go into of your course. town? Of course. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. We gotta she, do that, that was like the first thing she asked me, and I like just pulled up the Nintendo Direct. I'm like, here you go. Oh, shit. Okay, we got it. We got to go to each other's towns. Dude, you know this game is bullshit when people get excited at the prospect that you can finally sell clumps of weeds. Oh, my God. See, don't tell I... me that. I don't want to know. <laughs> I want to learn all these things on my own. I want to I have the same like, excitement I had when I played the first when I played the first one. That's, that's the, the only, only thing I'm going to say. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Let's just say this: Don't watch that Nintendo Direct. I there's didn't. A lot of good shit in there. No, I, I'm just saying don't because you. I, wa- I didn't want pants. to. You'll cream your pants. I know. There's some shit that I'm keeping on lock and key and not telling you, but it's good. just like, oh fuck, these are good design decisions. Finally, they're putting the shit in the game. Okay. Uh, the end. <laughs> yeah, the end. <laughs>